Hello, back to get again with another video of um, Make the Cuts Pop Up Card Studio. Um, today I thought I'd take it from a colouring book image to Make the Cut and then to Pop Up Card Studio and back to Make the Cut and Cut, cut it out. Um, so first off, what we'll do is go to Google Images and we'll go and we'll Images, Drawings, because we'll want a drawing picture for you all. What we'll do is we'll pick this photo, this picture here. It's a colouring book picture. So we right click, go copy image. So that is now in the clipboard. We open Meet the Cut and we go Pixel Trace, paste from the clipboard, and we go. That was a fairly good trace and we get import and we have finished that. Right, now the way to look at if it's going to be good enough for doing a pop-up in this way, we have to, first off we have to go around and make sure because if this cuts out it will fall out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the eraser and we'll give a cut across there. So that still looks like a trunk but it's not connected to the outer side. Same here and same here. So it still looks like a mouse but it's not joined so just this section here will cut out. The eye will cut out here, so we'll do an inverse eraser and just colour that in. Right. Next is this when it's cut, this will be left flapping, so we'll give a cut here. Just and up here. So what we'll, when it's cut for the pop-up, you'll still have this as the little shaping, but it won't be joined to the outside, so it won't cut completely out. We'll get rid of this little bit up here and this little dot here. We open the tail up so that tail doesn't fall off. The idea is to find all the bits that are going to fall out when the elephant's cut so it stays in the card. We'll just up this size here and we'll take out. I want this wording in the card, but we can fix this up, which I'll show you that as well. Take this back down to one millimeter. Right, this toe will need a bit of trimming. His knee pad. You sort of go around and you go, no, that's going to fall out completely and we don't want it completely fallen out. We'll take off this toe here. We sort of make it so it looks like an elephant but so there's no little babies going to fall off it. Right now this back um, leg is going to fall out because it was, it's a single piece so we just go 
You still leave the cut shaping. Take your time with it, zoom in, get a better view of what you're looking at. Now, this eye, just the very outside of the eye and the rest will fall out. So that's easy fixed. We just keep his eye together and give a little bridge, a couple of bridges in parts of his eye. And this little circle here, that doesn't matter if it falls out because it will just give more view into your back of your card. So then this will cut a little sliver out of here, but it will be still joined to the actual elephant. Now if we look around, well, we've got to go down here to fix the elephant's foot. We took that label out, that's easy fixed, all you do is you get the Bezier tool from here, do a rectangle back to here. Then you do your node editing, you just highlight the outside one, give it a little shaping, highlight the inside one. Making sure that they're overlapping the existing existing piece. We go back to here, we go select all and we go weld. So that's now welded welded that into shape. Now all that's left to do is just go around and make sure everything else is joined. This back of the leg isn't going to fall out. The tail isn't going to fall off. The ears and the head shaping is still there. It's just not going to fall off. That's fine. His mouth shaping is still there so you can still see that it's a mouth. But it's going to be there when it's complete. This trunk bit doesn't matter if that falls out because that you would need a hole there. And we go, that looks just about right. That's not what I wanted to do. You go inverse eraser if you need to add to. And we go, that looks about right. Now, this elephant is fairly big at the moment. Just select it, and what we do is now, if this was to cut it, it cut the outside line plus the inside line. That's not what we want, so what we'll do is we'll go layer, go to each its own, and close this. So this is your actual elephant. We've closed this outside layer, we don't want that. We want this, so this is what's going to cut. Now the only thing to do now is to zoom in. See where this is? Um, this ear is sort of hanging a bit here. You can just sort of shape that, so it just gives just a slight indent to show that it's an ear. You go around. This leg is a bit too defined, so we'll take that off there. You go. I think we might give a, a little cut around there, so these two is so it doesn't stick out too much. These um, slits. Defining the leg are a bit too high. You just get a feel for what you think is going to look alright when it sets the outline of the elephant. The toe might fall off a little bit. And a 
as I discover, take this bottom toe out. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out a bit. Now there's your completed elephant. So we now look at that and go, we're going to have these two feet joined to the bottom of the card when we take it over. So we just slightly turn it so it's right. Now with that highlighted, you can either go copy and paste it into um, the Papa Card Studio. Mine is not working at the moment because I'm using a beta version. So what I do is I go export, export to um, SVG file and name it something. Then what I do is open Pop-Up Card Studio if I made the cut and I go new and we'll go say 6.5 by 4.5 that's it, it, um, that's what size it'll be as a folded cut. I get OK. It's on the one inch from the back plane. So now I go either paste in place, a uh, paste, or uh, in this case I have to import SVG. Find my image. He's far too big at the moment. So I'll bring him down with the lock over here turned on. Say a height of four inches maybe and we'll see what that looks like. Okay that's a bit too big so we'll go three inches. And so that's right. So we'll go maybe go three point five. Putting it in the center, putting it on the bottom plane. Once we've trimmed off the bottom which is what's what we're going to do now. It's going to fit, it's going it's going to have to be under this white dotted line here. So what we have to do first is have a straight across the bottom, so the exclusive eraser. Using the <laughs> exclusive rectangle, I go and take a little bit off the bottom of the elephant. These two legs are feet of what's going to be connected to the bottom of the card. Then we go back to this, go put him in the centre, put him to the bottom. So this is now Just check that it's under the dotted line just. Now what we need to do is have anchor points from the elephant to the back of the card because there's a pop-up at the moment it won't work. Okay so I have three points of um, anchors. One across the top of his trunk here. That gives a bit of a anchor there. So you've got to have a straight straight point for the anchors. One across his ear, top of his ear. So it still keeps the shape, it still looks like an elephant. You're just slightly giving yourself a platform. And one across here. So that's one point here, one point there, and one point there. Now what you do is you go, well, double check that that's on the in the center on the bottom plane, and yes, it is. So now, what you do is you go bottom. We're going to put in the anchors 
from the elephant to the back of the card. To get to them, you go control shift and the arrow key up and see how this one's now turned to yellow so we know that we're working on this plane. So what you do is you go to the Bezier straight tool, have it on a snapping, mine is on 18, 1 eighth of an inch, then you go two point rack. When it turns, go to this side, when it turns dotted lines you go click, across the diagonal, when they both turn dotted lines, you go click. And then that same point done, you hold the shift and control down and you move your arrow keys up where this one will turn to yellow. You go click on the diagonal. When they're both dotted, you go click. Now we've got two anchor points. When we use the control and shift key, the arrows we go up to the next one. You can click here, cross the diagonal, you go click when they're both dotted. So we're now what we're left with, we turn the show plane off, we're left with our elephant, it's now a pop-up card. We zoom out by the roller on the mouse. We can see they're closed, it's not sticking out the top of the card, opened, he pops up. Now we go, we'll take a snapshot of that, see what it looks like. You can cancel this and you can move it around so you can see a different view, preview. You soon get to know what looks better in the previewing. Once it comes up with the preview, this export will be white again. That's what your preview looks like. If you're happy for that to be your thumbnail, you can go export, set as thumbnail, and then you save the card. You go save and save it what, what you want. Now this card is now complete, ready to cut. For your card. So now what you do is you send it to your machine and it cuts out. Take it off your cutting mat. Now this here on the side you'll see I've got a one half an inch ruler. It's very fine. It's a metal ruler. Now that's what I've used most of, for folding most of these cards and it's worked very well for me. Um, what you do, now this is showing how, how fine it is, it's not like the heavier metal rulers, it's very fine. I have a big collection of rulers so it was easy enough to find one that suited. What you do now is you thread it from the front of the card, you thread it in behind the two pieces, as in this case it's these two pieces that are going to be at the very front of the card. Threading it behind and taking the ruler down to the score lines. Then what you do is just slightly pull the ruler up and you'll notice that your score lines will start to bend. Don't push it all the way over to a definite fold. At the moment you just got to get the folds started. And you do the same up the top. Near the trunk you just thread it under the anchor to the end, then just slightly lift it up and it will give the crease a little bit. And up to the move your ruler up to the top where the um, crease line is. This is the best way I found to fold these. 
Um, and then you give it a little crease with your finger over the ruler. Just over to the edge of the ruler so it gives a little crease. And the same as with the other two pieces. See, I'm not folding it completely over the ruler. I'm just doing it at a 90 degree angle from the ruler. And the same as with the one on the back. Now what you do is you crease the centre line which becomes a valley fold. Both on this side, then you turn your card over. You don't force it or anything, you just slightly fold it. You don't have to crease it really bad, really heavy at this point of time. You're just getting the crease lines. So I've turned it around and I'm doing lifting up the back and just putting that crease line in a bit. Now what I do is I go around and I pinch all the fold lines so they're a bit more a definite crease. Where it's better off to do all your crease lines slightly, then after that's done, then you go around again, do it heavier, and if need be, you go around a second or a third or a fourth time and do it harder again, so it's a definite crease. Now what you do is you lay your base of your card facing up and you fold your first two bottom ones that are to your base of your card. In this case it's the legs of the elephant. And crease them so they're really forward. Not pushing the rest of the card, just working on just where the crease lines are. Then you slowly put, push the elephant forward so he lays on the base of the card. With that done, now with him laying on the base of the card, now you bring your fingers under and crease the ta anchor tabs where the elephant is, not where the back of the card is, but where the elephant is. You crease them so they're definite, so then that's laying on the card now. Then what you do is you just pull the back of the card over and it lays in place and you just crease the rest of the fold lines. Then you end it up with a fold like this. Now what I've done here, if you see, there's a little slither of um, the pattern here, here and here. They're not needed. They're too hard to um, glue inside your card. So I just trim them off. Trim that and trim that. They're all gone. Now it's time to fold back all these little stray bits because they were sticking out past the middle of the card they've got a score line across here so just fold them back okay then you get two little ones here like on this piece it's far too little and the way pop-ups work it's not worth leaving that there because it'll just be in the way because when you put your glue on you don't put it all the way to the fold line if you look up pop if you look at pop-up books that are pre-made the glue does not go right to the edge. So what I do is I just get a pair of scissors and trim this away. And there's your elephant ready, popped up, all 3D'd. And see how all of these lines still give the look that it's an elephant, but they're not going to fall out. Then you cut your outside of your card. What you do is you now just don't glue it in for the moment. You just lay it in to check that it's all going to fit and all neat the way you want it. Then you fold your card down. In this case, I usually, so far I've been just putting the base on first. So I turn my card over and I open it up. Now, I add the glue to it, but as I said just previously, I don't take the glue right to the edge of the um, fold line. I'm just short, short 
sort of a bit out. So I do it on all these pieces that are going to be onto the base of the card and all the way around. Then I lift up the card, the base, the base of the card. Now, leaving it flat on the ground like it was here, you find it very difficult to get these neatly in there. So you lift up the your card slightly, you line it up so the fold line is just on the just out just at the fold line of your card. Then you pull the green card back onto your lifted bit a bit, and then you fold it down. Now, if you try to if you try to if you try to just pick that up and glue it to there, it's not going to work. The best way I've found because I've made a fair few of these over the last week or two, is lifting this up slightly and then folding this over. When this touches the white of the card, then it folds, you fold them both down to the flat. You hold it down, push it around, so it makes sure that the glue dries. Give it time to dry. Don't be impatient. I use... I use... Um, scotch quick drying tacky glue which works well and it doesn't take that long to dry and set then what I do is turn the card over and now we're left with all these little flaps that we've got to do this one here and this one here and then we glue around it so we add the glue all the way around including those two little flaps that we folded back previous and this one we cut off this center one we cut off so you add the glue all the way around and once again you slightly lift up the white bit and then push take them both down flat hold it move it around until it's in place and then now here's we have the card when it's dry you can open it up and see that your elephant's nicely in place nice little pop-up ready for decorating so then now what I did is I went back to this robot here in Make the Cut and I shrunk him to 2 inches with the oh, 2.5 sorry 2.5 with the lock on. I put in there and I did a copy, paste in place, making sure that one's greyed out so it'll paste in the right one. Paste in place, mirror image that one. And you hold the control key and arrow over to all there. Both just overlapping a little bit here in the trunks. All I did then is weld that and cut this. And this is what I used. I added glue onto that. Then I added it to the front of the card because the wow is the wow of your card is the inside of your card. So I tend just to put something nice and simple on the outside of the card, but still looks all right. And here's your card. So this has been using Pop Up Card Studio by Make the Cut. If you'd like to purchase. Um, Pop up card studio, you'll find a link below this video, or you can go to my blog site, which is susanbluerobot.blogspot.com.au, and you'll find a link to purchase the Make the Cut Studio. Um, I'd like to see if you have any creations and you'd like to show us, come to Make the Cut Forum and show us all and um, until our next video I will let you 
go and have a look at some of my other videos if you haven't seen them yet.